Hey what's up everyone welcome to Effects Maniac again this is Sayed Mahmoud Amiri and welcome to another really exciting tutorial inside of 3D Studio Max and uh, uh, first off I just wanted to tell you guys that I am really really grateful for you guys that I, I've posted this tutorial for like in like two days ago and it got like over a thousand views in two days uh, which is really good and it, it keeps on improving so I just wanted to thank you guys beforehand and uh, that's the kind of support I need to keep making tutorials and it, it it kind of motivates me to do more so keep doing it and keep liking the videos and uh, I will surely do a lot more tutorial for you guys so in the meantime let's get back to the tutorial in today's tutorial I will just show you guys how to create a fire ring using Phoenix FD inside 3d studio max so it this was a sim that i've actually done like two years ago it's uh it's kind of high res and um i just i've got it from my instagram page i don't have the original file so if you go to just open up after effects uh if you go to my instagram which is effects with sayed so here it is it, this is the video that i got from there and uh I've actually it took a lot of time to simulate and render but the result is quite pleasing and then uh, this version which is slightly lighter version you know you can do and then once you once you know the trick behind it and how to do it you can basically increase the resolution and do a bunch of other things with it yourself so uh, this is gonna be the today's tutorial so let's get started but uh, wait what is that sound there? Do you hear that? Do you hear that sound in the background? What is it? Wait, 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 wait. Okay, that music was from here. Audio Aura. It is our new YouTube channel for high quality, royalty free, no copyright music. And if you guys are into video production and making videos and you need music for it, with no copyrights, you can use it in your YouTube, in your commercials, or whatever. This is our channel, and uh, these are uh, these are really high quality musics that my friend makes, and we we work on it, and then we upload it. So keep supporting us by subscribing to our new channel, Audio Aura, and use these musics in your videos and in your productions. Uh, all right, so let's get back to the today's tutorial. So I am going to go into 3D Studio Max, and here's our scene that we have basically simulated so um, I've done a very low res sim just for the sake of the tutorial and I know like once you get the technique you can go ahead and you know push it really high and create something like this but it would take a lot of time so that's why I simulated kind of a low res sim for you guys just to show you and then you can go on from there alright so what I'm gonna do is I am going to create a new scene so reset this and the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to customize unit setup and make sure that you're using metric centimeters and then unit setup one unit is one centimeter. So that will basically ensure that um, our values are kind of like on a scale, kind of on a real world scale. And that would make sure that whenever I'm uh, using any any value, you apply it and you will get the same results. All right. So um the first thing is that we need to create the source for the Phoenix FD to emit fire from. There is a bunch of different ways you can do it, but the easiest way I would say is by creating particles. So uh, I'm just going to get six particle flow, um, the good old particle flow, which um, no one really seems to be using it nowadays because of time flow, but still, you know, in this case, we've been using it for Phoenix FD. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'll go ahead into particle systems, PF source, just drag one out here. And it's just going to create some particles. So um, and then I'm just going to move this up and going to modify, change the icon type to sphere. So it's going to emit out of a sphere. I'm just going to make it real small. So yeah, that's that's the thing. And then the next thing is, of course, we need a ring, like a circle, to be able to emit the fire around it. So I'm going to go back into 3D Max, and I'm going to Shapes, and I'll add a circle from the front view, right in the center. And that's about it. I'm just going to move it up, 
scale it down and move it in the center of the comp. All right. If you don't want to see these selection brackets, you can just hit J or J, I think. It was J before. Control J, Shift J. Yeah. Maybe in 2020 they've changed it to like Shift J. But if you're using a previous version, it's just J only. All right. So Shift J. And then you can see that our, our circle is kind of not smooth. It's, it's kind of have, it's, it's like breaking just like that. So uh, I'm just going to go into the modify panel and interpolation and turn on adaptive and that will basically make it as smooth as possible. So the next thing is I want the particles to move along the path, along the circle. So what I'm going to do is select this particle system and going to animation constraints and path constraint and then I'm just going to select the path so that will basically what that will do is it will just move it around in the time that you're having right now so we want it to be slow so I want to emit for 200 frames so what I'm gonna do is control hit control Z and make my timeline going to the time configuration make it the length to 200 frames and then again just to redo the process so I'll just go into animation constraint path constraint and just add it and now we're going to be having it you know circling around in 200 frames so right now I'm going to hit 6 for the particle view and what I need to do is I need to delete the shape rotation and the speed I'm just going to make it very less like 20 and just like that and maybe even less and I'm just going to change it to icon center out like that and I will need to go to the birth and set the emit stop to 200 frames because I want it to continuously go around the circle and I think the movement is a little too much but then we're, it doesn't matter because we're going to be deleting them anyway so I'm just gonna go and increase the number of particles to maybe 600 and uh, I will just add a delete operator here so just go to delete and maybe I want them to last for like what 10 frames just like that yeah and then I want maybe I want a little bit more particles so maybe 1500 yeah that's that's better so and the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this uh, whole particle system hold down shift and drag it out copy and just you know just delete the speed and the delete operator so we just want the particles to kind of you know just grow you know just be in there because we want to kind of emit fire continuously off of these particles so um, maybe I'll just make him like what 1200 that's it so this is our particle system so what I'm going to do is now go ahead and create the Phoenix FD grid so I'm just going to create or the geometry and then I'm just going to go into Phoenix FD fire and smoke just add it there and the next thing that we'll do is I will create a Phoenix FD fire source so it's basically the toolbar is there so if you don't see it just right click and you can show the Phoenix FD toolbar and I'm just gonna go into fire source just drag one out here go into the modify and select the particle system not the circle the particle system right here and all the events okay so let's see what we have here basically without doing anything so I'm just going to simulate and go into the grid and I'm gonna to go to preview and let's turn on enable in viewport so we have some fire and we have some smoke but the thing is we don't really have a lot of fire and the next thing is our smoke is rising really high really fast which we don't want and in this case I, I don't want smoke so um, what I can do is just disable it in the simulation so I'm just going to stop this and go ahead select the fire source and disable the smoke and now if we simulate again which if I stop this and simulate 
you can see that we don't have any smoke but we don't have any fire too we have very less you know very less fire so the thing that I need to do is if you've ever used fume effects there was like a size of the particles that you could you know the radius that you could increase so here we also have like PRT shapes so what I'm going to do is going to use particle shape or the custom size so now if I increase this to like what 2.5 and re-simulate again you can see now that we have our fire so the fire is actually a lot more strong and the other thing is it's going real high real fast which we don't want so we need to tweak a few things in the settings of the fire so I'm just going to stop this and uh, I'll select the grid first off I'm just going to go up in the grid settings and I'm going to you see that the fire is getting cut off by the grid so I'm just going to turn on adaptive grid by temperature so and that, what that will do is like whenever the fire rises higher than the grid that will basically you know expand the grid automatically so I'm just going to if I just uh, simulate this again so now you see that the fire is actually you know the grid is actually expanding but the fire is going up crazy which that is not what we want so I'm just going to stop this and we need to do a few things about it so the other thing is I'm going to go into dynamics and uh, we want it to be slow so I'm going to set the points time scale to 0.6 and the gravity fairly low because we don't want the 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 fire to go up and then if you had smoke and if you wanted to like disappear quicker you could just increase this value and it will basically you know the smoke will disappear quickly and the other thing is we don't need to we need to turn down the large scale because we don't want it to be large scale and these uh conservation methods are actually really important if you go to um, Google and search like Phoenix FD fire burning chair there is a there is actually a file in the chaos group website that you can check out and it, it actually sets it up you know you can download the project file and there's a lot of different values they explain it pretty well so if you go here you know the scene scale how much how does this affect the scene and you know and some other parameters and then you have the different methods and different qualities so um, and the steps per frame too so what I'm going to do you can you can go ahead and check this out the I would say the buffered method is actually the nicest one for me and then you can increase the quality to get much more you know smooth flames so that's that's the thing so what I'm going to do is go back to 3 studio max and I'm going to set this to buffered and set this to like what 40 you can go higher but that's okay and then steps per frame that is what basically you know if you have a really fast moving emitter the grid can't really like take up the motion of the fluid so it'll basically kind of you know break it but if you have like more steps then it'll actually allow it to calculate better so I'm just going to set it to like 2 and uh, that's that's all about it I think and then once you once you go ahead and download this file here there's actually a really cool fire preset that you can use so what I'm going to do is I'll just simulate this again and see if the changes have taken place so of course it's going to be slow now because we've increased some values but let's see here so as you can see right now if I've just simulated a couple of frames it's not going that fast that wild but the smoke is the the fire is kind of getting you know really large and and like you know real big so what I'm going to do is there's actually a few things you can do you can go ahead you can turn down this PRT size to maybe like 2.2 .2 and that will basically uh, kind of shrink down the size of each of those you know fuel pockets if you may so now we don't have as much big of a particle and then I'm going to simulate a few frames of this and then I'll show you guys um, you know some other settings and some other things you can do to make it better so let's just wait for it to sim alright so I've simulated a few frames and now you can see that the fire is actually looking a lot more better 
but the thing is the thing that's going to make it you know it's going to change this drastically is that once you download the project file here there's actually a fire preset here so if i go down to uh, so if you go into rendering and then go to render presets you can load from file and then there is this uh you know burning fire flames uh tpr or something i don't know it's just a preset so if you add this is like successfully loaded would you like to see the changes yes of course so now you can see that the fire is much more better now you know it's got this fiery look and then you can go ahead into the volumetric options and then go to fire if it is too bright you can go ahead and you know turn down the power a little bit which looks which will make it look really cool and then the other thing just remember we haven't even increased the grid resolution it's already looking pretty cool so if if i go ahead and maybe go into the cells it's actually like 2.6 million cells uh, so if i increase this maybe twice then stop it and then re-simulate again now we have 8 million cells and now it's going to take some time but it's going to be looking much much more better so these are the basic settings that i've you know i've used and i've kind of set my simulation to so i'm just going to pause this because it's going to take a lot of time for the tutorial of course but you know this these are the settings that i've done you know setting this up and uh, this one up so uh, the other thing that i'm going to show you guys is how to composite this so once you once you do the rendering part you know i think here is the render so not this one this was a an early sort of test so this is the one and then if you go and create new composition out of it it's actually really fast so what I'm going to do is I have this uh, plugin called Re revision effects Twixture Pro so I'm just going to make it like what 60 percent so what that's going to do is really amazingly make it like 60 percent of the original speed and then you can just like pre-compose this control shift C move all attributes and just add a curves adjustment to make it like really fiery sort of just like that and you know there and you can also add like a glow effect to it stylize and glow and just increase the amount the radius and then the amount to like 0.2 maybe 0.5 that's that's about it and you know it all goes to that you know like if you increase the number of cells you can maybe let it sim for like a few hours and then it gets much more a much more realistic looking fire just like this I, I believe this one took like 10 hours but still it, it's it's worth the time so um that's that's basically it and that uh, basically concludes the tutorial for today i hope you guys found it useful even though we haven't really like simulated a high risk sim but you, you get the idea right and then this uh, you go through this document it really helps you understand how to set up a realistic fire using uh, Phoenix FD in 3ds Max so it goes in detail you know every setting so just go there and check it out and speaking of checking it out just uh, as always I'm really grateful for you guys keep supporting me keep subscribing to my channel share it with your friends and most importantly like the videos because that's gonna you know show it up more into the recommendations for other people and hopefully it can reach a lot more so that's that's the, that's what i want for you guys and as always if you have missed anything from the tutorial uh, make sure to tell me in the comments and i'll do my best to answer it and again make sure to uh, subscribe to our new channel audio aura and and i know i'm saying a lot about subscribing and stuff but uh, this is the platform that uh you guys allow me to serve you and you know it's, it's kind of like a mutual thing so you you support me and i'll basically add more tutorials and awesome stuff for you guys so that's that's the thing and uh, thank you again for watching this tutorial hope you guys found it useful and until next time enjoy working